Dark Cast Network, Indie Pods with a Dark Side. Sup, creeps? Welcome to another episode of Creepy Confidential. I would be willing to put bets that it was the title that brought you in today. My returning creeps know that the Creepy Confidential Library is one of my most prized possessions. And while I don't have any anthropodermic books myself, I find it fascinating that those books exist. What? You don't think you would ever think that a book made out of human skin could be cool? How about these little hints? This is the spell book of Winifred Sanderson. It was given to her by the devil himself. The book is bound in human skin and contains the recipes for her most powerful and evil spells. Or how about this one? For you elder millennials or Gen Xers. Matu! Rada! <laughs> Hey, wait a minute. Everything's cool. I said the word. I did. These examples are from fiction, but I feel it my duty to tell you that these types of books don't only exist in fictitious tales. Anthropodermic bibliopagy is the practice of binding books in human skin. And autoanthropodermic bibliopagy the practice of binding a book in the author's skin. Grab a cup of coffee, kids, and get ready to question if the binding of the books in your library or the one you cuddle up with is made of skin. Before we begin today's episode, we want to welcome you to the Creepy Confidential Coffee Corner. We love coffee around here, and it's what keeps us fueled for those long hours of research and obsessing over the latest book purchase. Our 2024 February Coffee of the Month is Campfire Coffee. Family owned and operated out of Tacoma, Washington, they operate a brick and mortar and an online spot for you to get your coffee fix. They roast their coffee over a campfire the way people did it for hundreds and maybe thousands of years before industrial roasters became a thing to give it a very robust taste that is perfection. This episode, we are featuring Starry Night. This is a single origin Ethiopian coffee. It's complex, rich, and has a bold chocolate berry-like finish. We like putting it in one of our French presses and sprinkling the tiniest bit of cinnamon. Our 2024 coffees of the month are not sponsored. We believe in shopping local and trying to put money back in the businesses that help make our daily lives better. Go to welovecampfire.com and pick up this delicious blend while supplies last. And now, on to the show. Welcome to Creepy Confidential. I'm your host, Noelle, your resident weirdo Wisconsinite. I open case files on cryptids, cults, conspiracies, and other worldly creepy with new cases, local lore, and live broadcasts. So get ready, creeps. It's Creepy Confidential. Welcome back, creeps. If you've been following Creepy Confidential for a while, you know that books mean a lot to us. We have all kinds. New books, old books, first editions, paperbacks, and hardcovers. We've gotten them from all sorts of places. Maybe an online purchase, one of those big box bookstores, or one of our favorite vintage and antique book spots. You know the ones. They have that bookstore smell. There's nothing quite like the smell of decay, at least when it comes to books. Like many of you out there, I have watched quite a few movies that involve some sort of book that's bound in human skin or a cursed book. And then I was thinking to myself, self, Are there really books bound in human skin? And how do they really know it's human skin? Also, where can I see these books? My journey started when I stumbled upon a book at the library. Dark Archives by Megan Rosenblum, a librarian's investigation into the science and history of books bound in human skin. This isn't going to be a book report, but more of a collection of information, but Some of it may contain a little information from this fantastic book. Let's start with one of those that come from fiction, shall we? 
The book from Hocus Pocus, a.k.a. Winifred's Sanderson's Bestie. We're going to dive into some legend lore here. The original movie says that it was given to Winifred Sanderson by the devil himself, but in Hocus Pocus 2, it's revealed the book was gifted to Winifred by the witch mother on the day that she turned 16, that Winifred turned 16. For those of you tracking, this is the age when a young witch is said to come into her powers, according to the movie. Now follow me. The witch mother, who apparently roams the forbidden woods of Salem in search of children whom she relies on for her youthful appearance, apparently gifted this book to Winifred. So since witches are known to kill children for their powers, is it possible that this book is actually made out of children's skin? How's that for a Disney Easter egg? The next potentially fictitious book is another one that a lot of us elder millennials or Gen Xers or just people who enjoy scary movies probably know. Necronomicon Ex Mortis, or Book of the Dead. The book was featured in the original Evil Dead trilogy and is the one that most of us have come to know and love and fear. This little page-turner is an ancient tome of prophecies, funerary incantations, and demon resurrection passages compiled by a race known as the Dark Ones. The Necronomicon first appeared in the 1981 film The Evil Dead, and the book was designed to serve as a compendium for all things supernatural for these supposed Dark Ones. But the book eventually escaped into the hands of humanity, where it was passed from owner to owner. This New York Times bestseller, in one universe or another, was supposedly constructed by the Dark Ones and made of a skinned head of a powerful demon to create the book's ghoulish bindings. But these are from fiction, ghoulish and scary props that are created for film. Would it shock you to know that one of the largest collections of anthropodermic books is right here in the United States of America? But Miss Creep, are you telling me that there are really books made of human skin, like in real life? Why yes, my little creeps, that's exactly what I'm telling you. I would beg to differ that almost everyone listening to this has held a leather-bound book at some point in their life. The smooth, tanned, and sometimes brightly colored skin beneath your fingers. Sometimes the leather is embossed to indicate the title of the book. If you're a bibliophile like myself, I would also beg to differ that your hands most likely slowly linger over the letters beneath your fingertips, perhaps to caress the cover. Now imagine you lovingly caressing the embossed letters of this book, only to discover that the skin is from a human. When the French Revolution happened, there were rumors of a tannery that had been established just outside of Paris where they utilized human skin. The majority of anthropodermic books that have been confirmed to date are from the 19th century. I would have considered that many of these books would have been bound by perhaps perverse or twisted individuals. However, it turns out many of these books were, it was done, it was bound um, by doctors. So not to waste the cadaver skin. The largest collection of anthropodermic books belongs to the Mutter Museum in Philadelphia, where they have five confirmed books that have been bound in human skin. Another interesting part was that it's not the entirety of the binding, but usually a term called quarterbound. It's just uh, the wide spine of the book that contains the human skin. So you'll see it come, of course, on the edge of the book, and you'll see it kind of come around the side of the book, but it won't come cover to cover. The website anthropodermicbooks.org is linked to the Anthropodermic Book Project. Sadly, their website uh, states that there's a little update and they say that the team's work is currently on hiatus, and to, but to feel free uh, to contact them with any questions. The website shows their current count of alleged, tested, and confirmed books. But how do they know if it's really human? 
this question came about because DNA would be destroyed in the tanning process. But it turns out in the more modern years, they use a, a procedure called peptide mass fingerprinting to identify what sort of mammal was used in the sources of collagen-based materials that are found in the book's bindings, leather, and parchment. A little bit of nerd science. Every collagen cell undergoes a sort of enzymatic digestion to cut the protein at the specific amino acid sites, forming a mixture of peptides. Every mammal has a unique amino acid sequence, and once they identify the sequence, they know what sort of mammal it came from. They then used the fingerprint of that, or peptide mixture, and then they run that through the mass spectrometer. And Bob's your uncle. They know what it is. The sample size needed for this particular test is roughly the same size as the head on the Lincoln Memorial on the back of a penny. So let's give the people what they want. You guys want to know about books found in human skin. And there's a few examples. Most of them are found right here in the USA. The first one, though, we travel across the water to the Horwood book. In a town near Bristol in 1821, a man named John Horwood was executed. He was a mere 18 years old, and his case was very public. He had been convicted of a murder of one Eliza Balsam. It was a slightly older girl he had become infatuated with and had threatened to kill. Eliza died following a head injury after Horowood had threw a stone at her, but the problem was she didn't die immediately. She died under the care of a Dr. Smith who was trying to perform, at least for what sounds like to me, a craniectomy to relieve pressure on the skull. This procedure should have been a last resort, and other reports claim that the doctor performed this procedure prematurely and did it only to obtain a body as a cadaver. Mr. John Horwood was publicly executed, dissected by Dr. Smith, and the doctor had some of Horwood's skin removed and tanned to bind a collection of papers about the murder, trial, execution, and ultimately the dissection of Horwood's body. The brown book cover was embossed with skulls and crossbones with the words Cutis Vera Johannes Horwood, translated to The Actual Skin of John Horwood. The book is on display at M. Shed, a Bristol museum. Traveling back to USA, our next book, when translated the cover uh, into English, is titled Destinies of the Soul. Originally, back in 1934, this book was loaned to Harvard by its previous owner, John B. Stetson Jr. Now, if your ears perked up, then you must be familiar with the Stetson hat because this guy is the son of the pioneering hat maker. So John Jr. loans the book to the library in 1934, who was an avid bibliophile. And then his widow made the gift permanent in 1954. According to the Guinness World Records website, the author wrote the book as a meditation on the soul while mourning the death of his wife and originally gifted a copy and its original binding to a friend, Dr. Bouland. And this doctor had this edition rebound in the skin that had been removed from, quote, the back of the unclaimed body of a woman patient in a French mental hospital. Inside the cover is an inscription. Quote, a book on the human soul merits that it being human clothing. End quote creepy dude. The reason it shows up in the GuinnessWorldRecords.com website is that this is the first book confirmed scientifically to have been bound in human skin. The Historical Medical Library of the College of Physicians of Philadelphia has the largest collection of anthropodermic books, with the current number being at five. Three of these books are a collection that they call the Marys. These books are very unassuming and appear to have the technique of the quarter-bound book look. Saturday the 16th, 1869, a young woman named Mary passed at a facility called Old Blocky, also known as Philadelphia General Hospital. This is the type of place that you would go when you couldn't afford the type of care at a regular private hospital. She suffered from tuberculosis of the lungs. 
She was there in the summer of 1869, which was a very hot year, and temperatures soared in a time when AC did not exist. Friends or family members were thoughtful and brought Mary pork and bologna to supplement her hospital diet. Unfortunately, the pork products were tainted with a parasitic roundworm frequently found in pigs. Dr. John Stockholm Hugh was attending some patients in the ward. This doctor, who just happened to be attending to her, happened to be researching an interest in trichinosis. After Mary's passing, she was autopsied by this physician. His graphic depiction of trichinosis that led to her death was published in 1869 in the American Journal of Medical Sciences. At some point before or after the autopsy, he removed a piece of skin of Mary's thigh and took it to his basement room where he tanned it in a chamber pot. In January of 1875, the doctor's wife passes away shortly after giving birth to their daughter. In June of 1887, just weeks before he was ready to remarry, he takes Mary's skin and uses it to partially bind three books. One of them is the Speculations on the Mode and Appearances of Impregnation in the Human Female, published in 1889. The other two titles are long French titles that I don't want to be chased around by nice French people because I pronounce them wrong. So just know there's very long. Just know that they are both on the subject of female health. Each one of these books deals with feminine health, conception, and reproduction. The college calls these books the Marys so that the human connection is still attached to them and it doesn't get lost with time or history, but they want everyone to know and remember that this was a person and that she was real. Traveling to Boston at the Boston Anthenaeum is an ordinary sized book, which is a memoir by a career criminal named James Allen, also known as George Walton. The gray cover bears a Latin inscription that is translated to, This book was bound in Walton's skin. Mr. Allen was born in Lancaster, Massachusetts in 1809 into a struggling family. He fell into a life of crime at the age of 15 after a chance meeting with someone who was a master in the life of thievery. In his life, He spent the majority in and out of various jails, and while incarcerated, he wouldn't waste time. Instead, he would read books to learn trades and get along well with everybody, but as soon as he was released, he would run right back to the life of burglary and highway robbing, and eventually passed away of tuberculosis at the state prison in Charleston, Massachusetts. Before his passing, perhaps to clear his conscience, he decided to tell the prison's warden his life story and to have him write it down. Allen also made an extremely unusual request. The request included that they take enough of his skin to be tanned to provide bindings for two copies of this memoir. One copy was to be given to his doctor, and the other one to a John Fennell Jr., one of Allen's victims, who he considered to be the only man who ever stood up to him. The human leather was tanned and treated to look like gray deerskin, and delivered into the hands of a bookbinder. The samples of these anthropodermic books that are known are sadly a small collection of what may have existed at some point. It's a controversial subject, with many feeling that due to these books being bound in human skin, they should be treated like remains and buried or even cremated. Like many things in history that we don't agree with today, I don't feel that it's necessary to destroy history because we can learn from these things. While a very macabre lesson, it is still something that we can learn from as it is part of our world history. France seems to be one of the highest creators of these ghoulish phenomenons. And since the guillotine was a very busy item during the time that the French were really in the swing of things, they saw it fit to not let the leather go to waste of these thieves and lawbreakers. 
Anthropodermic books are disappearing from the public eye simply due to the controversy that is attached to them, and many feel that by displaying these books, it is a dehumanizing event. In the case of the book bound in Alan's skin, this book is sadly no longer available for viewing by the public or by appointment, and some colleges that contain collections of books like these are following suit. The macabre nature attracts many types of individuals as well, and it makes sense why we would not want these, these out in the open for these types of people. There is a little honorable mention section that I would like to include with these types of books. Almost all of the books that were found to be bound in human skin, many of them uh, were either medical or either a story. However, there's only one known example of a book in a more spicy note. A French 16th century poem that was bound in the 19th century contains the only known example of a BDSM erotic poem and is the only known example of this type of writing with anthropodermic bindings. This is housed at the oldest bibliophilic club in North America located in New York, the Grolier Club. The title is long in French, and I don't feel like getting any angry letters from a very well-educated Frenchman, so my very rough translation, I believe, is to be The Line of Sight Poems allegorize safely to my lord and to the Mrs. Lorraine Which to me, even in English, sounds quite lovely and a little spicy. If you are a bibliophile like myself, then you better believe every single leather-bound book that I find, I'm going to give a little closer inspection. Because you never know that smooth leather binding could have belonged to somebody. Literally. If you enjoyed today's episode, we ask that you please give us a rating and click that little follow button. If you enjoy creepy content and want a little more creepy in your social media scrollings, we are everywhere. Instagram, YouTube, X, Twitch, and everywhere you listen to your favorite podcast, which we know your favorite podcast is Creepy Confidential, right? Coming up next in the last week of the month, and everyone knows what that means, Creepy Confidential After Dark. February 23rd, we will be welcoming the guest Book of the Dead podcast. No script, no rules, and a whole lot of creepy. The publication will be going live on YouTube, X, and Instagram. Closing out today's episode is a Darkcast Network preview presentation by Book of the Dead podcast. Stay creepy, my friends, and we'll see you next time right here on Creepy Confidential. Hi guys, I'm Courtney. And I'm Lisa. And we are the hosts of The Book of the Dead, a true crime podcast based out of New Jersey, where we tell you about the most obscure cases that you may have never heard of. So join us in The Book of the Dead library for another chapter of The Book of the Dead wherever you get your podcasts. Bye guys.